chances are that you wear a watch and it's a particular brand. But what does that say about you? We're here to find out. It doesn't matter who you are, I'm sure that you probably want to spend less on your watches and you can do so by buying pre-owned. Check out our whole abundance of different watch brands over at watchfinder.com. Tom, as a pseudo-psychologist, I often wonder what it means when people do things, and I think you'll agree that the way we present ourselves, the way we dress, the way we decorate our bodies is very, very key to understanding who we really are. Would you agree with that? Yeah, that sounds like the sort of pop psychology I would expect from someone of your characteristics. <laughs> Very good, yes. I see we're getting meta here already and we've barely even begun. Because this is such an in-depth topic, we decided to rope in the skill set of a highly trained computer machine to see what we could find out about different watch brands and what it means for their owners and who their owners really are. So let's jump straight into it. Tom, do you want to go first with what we discovered about Omega owners? Okay, so here's what the machine had to say about Omega wearers. Omega, you wear brogues without socks to corporate dinners and private view art exhibition nights. You read GQ and you've got an airsoft Walther PPK. You think James Bond is a real person. Wait, what? He's not? Initial thoughts on that. I, yeah, I, I, I think I agree with much of what the, the machine has said there. Uh, someone who, who wears Omega is someone who perhaps feels like they are more discerning than the typical watch buyer. They have done their research and gone down a slightly different path. They've got aspirations of adventure, but really those aspirations are lived vicariously through a cinema screen. But that's fine, because ultimately you have to do a boring job to pay for your Omega in the first place. Uh, there are very few people who get issued these things as uh, in, in real world situations like like our good friend and hero, James Bond. Yeah, and an Omega wearer definitely to me seems like a dapper Dan. They drink only the very, very finest vintage white wine spritzers. <laughs> yeah, and boat shoes, I would imagine, comes into it as well. Yeah, uh, notorious for waiting about three minutes after meeting someone new before telling them that their watch has been to the moon, and quite specifically making it ambiguous as to whether it was their watch specifically or just the model in general. <laughs> yeah. Tom, let's jump into Panerai and see what the machine says about Panerai owners. You saw the movie Daylight with Sylvester Stallone. Eating red meat and diving underwater to free people from wreckage is how you like to unwind. Your door frames and table edges hate you. That tallies, I think. Uh, the Panerai is a powerful watch for powerful people, I would say. Absolutely. The kinds of people who are very, very keen to look down into their family trees, their histories, and just look for that 116th Italian so they can walk around a gloomy London day saying how exotic they are. Oh yeah, I've got an Italian. I'm partially Italian. Yeah, you know, that's why I, that's why I do this a lot because I'm very Italian. I'm very different and exotic. The world itself needs a crown guard as big as a Panerai's um, to contain you, I think, um, because you're coming up. <laughs> um, people better get out of your way. You don't care what people think. You really don't. Uh, next, we asked Computron uh, what it thought of people who wear a Casio G-Shock. And it came back with the freshest fits and tightest whitest kicks to catch the drip by day, hacking the system by night. You make socks with sliders work somehow. Everyone else is jealous. True, true, true dat. I, when someone wears a G-Shock and they look cool wearing it, I am so jealous. I have had to spend so much money trying to not look like a pleb, and they are wearing a £50 watch and looking awesome doing it. It's not a watch that you can wear in like a cape. The watch has to wear you. It accentuates who you really are, and to be honest, imposters will be recognised. It's a cool club, and uh, no amount of dabbing on my part can get me into it. Um, so, yeah. Tom, the Wizotron 5000, we asked it about Tudor, and it said... You know all your wildest dreams aren't going to come true, so it's better just to settle for what you've got. You drive a Toyota Camry. I, I think a Tudor owner is a realist. Um, they, you know, they're happy with a Black Bay, and that's great. You know, Black Bay is a fantastic watch. 
and you know there's no danger in it yeah I, they're, they're the kind of people who who see the positive in everything i think no no matter how bleak they're the kinds of people who would say things like if i were to wake up dead tomorrow that's fine because i've got chores at the weekend yeah but i'm well organized um so it's not an issue and secretly they're crying inside because all of the kids they grew up with in school have done so much better than they have but the Pelagos has got fixed lugs, so it's not going to fall off. And that's a, that's a victory every day. Living life by the small celebrations. Next, the Borg told us about Grand Seiko. Uh, there's a special place at parties for Grand Seiko owners, the corner. Other party goers don't have a clue about Zeratsu polishing, but you know, and soon they will too. Yes, I think I agree that the Grand Seiko owner is contemplative, um, meditative. You know, they will be stood in the corner of a party, blood boiling that no one knows how um, intricately finished their watch is. Um, and they may have to go over and explain it to them, or they may, you know, watch the snowfall out the window and yeah. uh, and then just leave and, and go home and listen to some shoegaze, uh, you know, that... that that's just how they are. Yeah. And really, the, the calming effect of a Grand Seiko dial sits hand in hand with the ability to reduce the absolute disgust they have that no one has asked them about how interesting they are. I don't, I don't get it. Why wouldn't they want to know? So what did the Amstrad have to say about Breitling? Well, you could have been a pilot, but you started a family instead. Sometimes you like to ride your motorcycle really fast to the top of a hill and just look into the middle distance for a bit. Maybe you'll go back home again. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. The Breitling wearer is, um, you know, they could have made general in the forces, but, you know, they wanted to dedicate their time to um, raising their kids and um, driving them to and from uh, football practice and... They, they kind of get everything they, they wanted from those missed opportunities from wearing the Navitimer anyway. So a Breitling owner is contented and um, you can't prove otherwise. At least at least on the outside. At least until the, the snap. Yeah. They were wearing bomber jackets before they were cool. So, yeah. Next, we asked uh, Skynet what it thought about people who wear Audemars Piguet. Audemars Piguet. You asked the man at the shop which watch was best for someone with lots of money. Yeah, and and that is he's going to tell you the Royal Oak. It's yeah, very indicative of someone who's done well financially, I would say. Either for themselves or on behalf of a, a parent perhaps. Perhaps they're a hotshot producer or a lucky benefactor of a recently deceased auntie. Um, Typically, their first introduction to the Royal Oak, before they know anything about it, is I hate it, it's horrible and ugly. But as they learn the nuances, like how well it reflects you as an individual and your wealth, that's when you really learn to appreciate the fine details of the watch. Those hideous angles and awkward shapes, it materialises, you mature as a person to, to really reflect your inner self in a much more detailed fashion. The bezel with the uh, hexagonal screws that cannot be undone are um, very unlike the ones inside your head. Here's what Nunu had to say about Patek Philippe. Your grandfather ran a very successful clothing business which you inherited along with his Patek Philippe. You'll probably drive both of them into the ground. The Patek Philippe, obviously the computer tapping into the fact that uh, you don't own a Patek Philippe, you just hold on to it for the next generation. I mean, it's the only way to acquire one now, isn't it? Be the son of a Patek Philippe owner or take the life of a Patek Philippe owner. Um, is that right? Save the life. Sorry, save the life. Yeah. Um, a slight uh, slip of the tongue there. Uh, yeah, I mean, inheriting watches is a great way to go. Uh, saves money in the long run. They, they really have taken the smarter route in life. Why, why do work when you can enjoy the benefits of someone else's work? And, and really, they don't understand why no one else is doing that. They also don't really understand why no one works like they do. They, everything they've achieved, they believe is their own success. 
because even though they had great benefits in life, they still have really put their own personality into it and made their own decisions. And really everyone else could learn a lesson or two from that if they also want to be equally as successful and protect Philippe owning. Yes. The Cyberdyne system computer told us what it made of Hublot owners. Hublot! You aren't watching this, so it doesn't really matter. But you're cool enough to make your own decisions, like teaching yourself to ride a superbike and buying that yacht off Craigslist. Um, yes, those are indicative financial um, decisions that a Hublot owner might make, I would say. A Hublot owner is a free spirit. They're someone who doesn't listen to what the man says or indeed the woman or anyone else with any kind of financial nous. They choose their own path in life, regardless of if that path is just to the left of a very clean, smooth and straight road. They will take the lumpy, bumpy route regardless because that's their decision to make. Sure, they will learn some lessons along the way and sure, some of those lessons will be hard, but they are well learnt. Sometimes. Sometimes they will learn something from them, but not always. The lesson learned is a hublot gained. Exactly. It's, it's a mentality that I really, really admire. If only I could free my mind from this cage to expand it to the extent of a hublot owner, to see through their eyes and really absorb the world in a much more open way. But alas, I am constrained to the rules of not wanting to spend all my money on rubbish. <laughs> so the great and glorious hive mind uh, spoke to me through cables to my brain and it said this about Rolex. You're achieving your goals and winning at every opportunity. You're the best and everyone knows it. Your phone is ringing off the hook, but they'll have to wait because you're trying to run a small business here. You should run for president. Why aren't people looking at you? Rolex ownership is the fast track to success, isn't it? If you're wearing a Rolex, you've made it and everyone can see that. A Rolex to me is, is an all access pass to life. You can scan that at any gate, any entry and you'll get in because people just know, I don't need to ask you questions. I can already see by the fact that you're wearing your Rolex over the top of your sleeve so I can understand who who you are and how important you are, that you have made it. And that I don't need to ask you any questions about that. It is it is clear and indicative. This is my sky dweller. These are my credentials. I'll be landing this plane. And that's the end of it. What better CV can you have? Never mind Oxford or Cambridge or even Eton. The school of Rolex is really, truly the school of life. Yes. And you know you're in safe hands when you're buying a used car if the salesman is wearing a Rolex as well. So there's always that. Well, there you have it, dear viewer and listener. Those are the thoughts of the machine. And the machine has spoken. We all bow down to the machine. What do you think about these various brands and what they say about the owners? Of course, we're just having a little bit of fun and we hope you did too. If you did, please do like and subscribe as well. And check out perhaps one of those little watches for you over on watchfinder.com. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.